Lovely to have your company, folks. It's amazing. The fabulous James Harris is joining us on today's show, and he will be with us. Maria and I are here. Hello. We are video casting, and because the main cast was a little slow to come up, I activated the emergency plan B broadcast, so we are double. It'll be like a TV mixing studio there with you, wherever you are. There'll be like two versions of us. You, I know you wait all day for one book club, and then two come along, and it's that's the kind of show we have folks here are our contact details contact the show now text us on 078 600 26 400 email learnradiolive at gmail.com or tweet us at learnradiolive and we'd love to hear from you folks during today's show. This is a great Q&A. The show page is up. Just go to learnradio.net forward slash James Harris. You'll find everything there. And he is waiting in the green room, munching on our biscuit selection. Let's hope he doesn't go for all of the bourbons because those are my favourite. Now, we've got biscuits here, Maria. I've got my uh, hobnobs. So here we've all... Oh, excellent. Now, that's a Jaffa cake. That's a little controversial. I have this interesting VAT office. That kind of, kind of thing that that's a cake rather than a biscuit but we've got biscuits here you will also need your name badge i'm gonna put these up there in a second you will need your name badges look at our name badge we've got fabulous name badge. here's a close-up of uh, maria's name badge so that's hers as well and this will all become apparent when you've read the book i have to say or perhaps a little taste at of the book and here's my badge there we are that's really good marmite and pickle jam tart do ask about them because they are scrum delicious absolutely folks just get onto that show peach and drop us a question james will take absolutely anything from you and i really do mean that absolutely anything from you this afternoon get on there and ask those questions just right on the padlet we'll explain how that works in a little while's time it's really good we are talking about the unbelievable biscuit factory it's our feature title this week and it is unbelievable the biscuit biscuit factory in haddie's hometown is not a hundred percent a super secret lab i love it as well there's a lot of that in the book and i loved it there's so much truth in that, Maria. We just loved this title, didn't we? I haven't I, stopped laughing. It was it was just crackers. I loved it. I even stuck some googly eyes onto my book as well. Oh, and yes. We, it's really good. You know, you know I love googly eyes. And when yes. you flick through the book, the illustrator Loretta Shower has put in little tiny rabbits so they kind of, you know, pop up here and there. Lovely. And of course, oh. you know, it's a good, a good book smell. Oh, it smells. It smells good. Oh, we love a good illustrator mention. Loretta, I'm hopefully we're going to get you on the show soon because you are one fabulous person. The badge, uh, and all credit to you as well, is just absolutely fantastic. Folks, you need to be on the show page, learnradio.net forward slash James Harris. That is where you'll find everything you want, including our resources and a click-through link to purchase a copy of the book. If you're not already a book club owner, you will want one of these as well. This educational resource resources and a whole range of stuff on there as well uh, colleagues if you want to follow this gentleman on twitter he is at james underscore d underscore harris that's james underscore d underscore harris if you want to follow him on twitter now this book is bonkers it is absolutely totally bonkers interdimensional portals with huge fluffy orange monsters what is not to love about that there's a delightful slapstick comedy about the book that i absolutely love for me it took me back to some really funny times it's amazing title we love it james is the winner of the northern writers award and deservedly so this should be an animation i think that pixar and disney should get behind this i see this as an animated film series i think this is a great cartoon as well uh, the following broadcast is brought to you by the department at funny broadcasts and also if you check my name badge you'll see you need to ask about this delicious marmite and pickle jam tarts really really good uh, we've had an absolute hoot and a half all week it's been an unbelievable non-stop, ladies and gentlemen. And time for you to put your hands together, please, and welcome the amazing James Harris to the show, folks. Here he is. He's here. He's in glorious colour. And check out that set. Oh, James, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm loving the monsters. Wow. Dal, thank you well, very much. Uh, uh, they were here when we moved in. <laughs> we just had to decorate around them. And that's what you're in for, folks. That is precisely what you're in for. That is just what we are missing right now in our educational landscape. We desperately need some more James Harris. You are hilarious. Uh, 
absolutely hilarious. It's a lovely book, isn't it, Maria? Oh, it's just wonderful. James, it's just such an honour to speak to you since I've just read your book and I can ask you lots and lots of questions. It was an absolute hoot and a half. It was crackers. I remember messaging Russell all the way through. Have you got to page 12 yet? Have you got to page 22? Have you got to page this? I mean, it's just brilliant. I loved every moment of it. Now, don't forget, viewers, we're totally live to get today and James will be taking your questions on the show later. Absolutely. And you can write on the show page. Just go to learnradio.net forward slash James Harris. You'll find everything there, including the padlets. And you'll be looking for that post-it note environment. Click or scroll down or flick down with your finger if you're using a tablet. Find that pink circle with the plus key. Hit that. Put your first name in the top box and your question underneath. Then click on the background and await approval. We'll approve those and get those onto the show as quickly as you possibly can. Right, James, here is your starter for 10 and your first question from Marie. Thank you very much, Russell. Now, James, Haddy has some unruly hair and breaks her unicorn brush in trying to tame it. That's happened to me many, many times. Although my hair is straight, it is naturally curly. Now, we would like to know from you, have you had any hair experiences? Have I? Yes. Well, that's kind of based on real life uh, in two ways. One, I had long hair until I was, well, for about 10 years between the ages of 18 and 27. Mm. Um, uh, magic hair detangling fluid. That was uh, that was mm. my saving grace. But also, I used to have a Superman hairbrush oh. um, that that chopped in half uh, through overuse when I was uh, a young child as well. So it's all based on this is factual factual stuff all the way through the book. Oh, I was hoping you'd say you had a unicorn one as well. That would be great. Maybe you I should. I do get have one. a unicorn in here somewhere. I'll find it Somewhere. in the next song. It's hiding behind a monster, I think, as well. That's an amazing way this goes. Now, Haddy's mum prepares smoothies. I love it. I just love it as well. What's your preferred flavour of smoothie, James? Oh, anything with peanut butter in. You take a smoothie, and that is a that is like a superfood, isn't it? That is a mm. food that will make you better. And then you ladle peanut butter into it, and you get all the the wondrous joy of peanuts and calories. But those calories are cancelled out by the blueberries or the the bananas or the kale or whatever else might be in there. Maybe even a little pinch of turmeric. You can eat those all day long, and not put any weight on at all. And that is a fact. Well, I'm going now. I'm on, Maria's already on to her online shopping order and adding peanut butter to her shopping list this week. I know she is. Absolutely. Maria, you've got another question there for us. Thank you very much, Russell. That sounds like something should be on the Wikipedia, you see? <laughs> yes. <laughs> peanut butter. That's wonderful. Now, James, you describe Haddie's mum as being so complicated, you would need to go to five different shops to get the ingredients to make her as a recipe. And we would like to know what shops would we need to go to get a James Harris recipe? Oh man, wow, you would probably, you'd need to go to a bookshop. You'd have to spend a lot of time in a, in a bookshop, uh, spend time in there browsing all the books and the comics, a uh, bit of sci-fi, a bit of horror, a uh, lot of comedy. What else would you need? Peanut butter smoothie shop. Uh, you need a lot of peanut butter smoothies. Uh, whoa, what else? A music shop. Uh, one where you could buy Ooh. CDs and records, but also musical instruments to, to bang, strum, and flail around your head. How many shops have I been to so far? I'm not as complicated as mothers. That's the oh, thing. Okay. So you probably only need three or four shops. I'm actually oh. quite, I'm simple. I'm fairly basic soul. Uh, so probably those four ingredients. Nice. Uh, you can, some glasses. You have to have some glasses. Yes, of course. Uh, they've been part of my trademark for quite a while now. Oh, that's brilliant. That is wonderful, Russell. That's great. I think I would go to a lot more shops as well. I would, um, I'm a bit more complicated, so I would probably go to a marshmallow <laughs> shop, certainly. Um, I would certainly go to a recycle shop. Russell, which shop would you go to? I'm just loving this as well. Well, a health food shop as well. I think I love it. I'm peanut butter. I'm just uh, uh, just in <laughs> awe of a peanut butter smoothie. What a great idea as well. Uh, and some ice cream in there as well. Just amazing. Yes. I just I hadn't thought about stuff like that. It's really clever. I hope these questions are unusual and slightly off the wall, which is what we really wanted uh, for the show. There are some on the show, Padlet. Thank you so much indeed. So a very good afternoon to some of our listeners that are uh, writing on our Lola's Mummy as well. Thank you so much. Keep them coming. One from Andre. Thank you. Hello. And Casey and Lola's Mummy again on there. Keep those questions coming. We're now going to ask James for a reading, please. If you can read from the book. I know, did we not mention that? Have you not got a book handy? Yes, I have got a book handy. That, uh, with a bookmark as well. What, tell us what you're going to read. And if we need to get a little synopsis up to that point, just fill us in, please. It's all I'm yours going now. to read chapter three, uh, which is certainly, if not one of the best chapters, it's certainly one of the earliest. Um, so all that's happened so far is our hero, Haddy, who's a, a, a young 
young girl who uh, who enjoys being in a band and playing music with her friends. Uh, her and her friends have uh, made their way to their practice room where they where they play their their music quite loud. It's the the community center. Okay. And uh, this chapter is kind of where the story kicks into high gear nice. quite quickly. Uh, what I have noticed doing my yes. prep, uh, originally in earlier drafts of the book, rather than a community center, they were practicing in a scout hut. And at some point I decided, I think because I wanted some themes of community and something about people coming together, I like the, I like the name community center. So I got yes. rid of the scout hut, except for one mention of hut, which no. if you listen carefully during this, uh, during this chapter, you no. may notice the one hut uh, that I forgot Wow. To get rid of. Well, thank uh, you. So you start that, and we'll just be we'll just be here with our, our biscuits. So just don't mind us in the background. We'll just be, there may be some crunching sounds in the background. Don't a, worry. Make a particularly big crunching sound when you hear the sound of the hut. Okay. All right. So here Thanks. we go. I love the community center. It has toilets and plug sockets and Wi-Fi and vend and a vending machine that sells pickled onion flavored things. You could live there quite happily. We practically do live there. We try to practice as often as possible because if you want to make a truly awesome noise, you have to practice. Sometimes people will walk past the hut. Crunch. Crunch. You, and shout, <laughs> what the heck's that noise? And we will shout back, it's exactly the noise we want it to be. You plum. Only we won't say you plum because that is rude, but we will be thinking it. As George and Naomi set up their gear, I walked over to the storage space at the back and opened the cupboard doors in slow motion. Golden light bathed the room, red smoke billowed forth, and the sound of a billion angels singing, Whoa, yeah, sang out as I reached in and grasped the neck of El Giraffa Tremendo. Which is to say, I got my guitar out of the cupboard. The light and the dry ice, etc., might not have actually happened, but this is my book, and I thought occasionally adding a few special effects and a soundtrack might make things more uh, exciting for you. Whoa, yeah! El Giraffa Tremendo is my guitar. Mum makes me keep El Giraffa, Giraffa Tremendo and my ampl amplifier in the community centre for the same reason that you don't keep a tiger in the bathroom cupboard. El Giraffa Tremendo is dangerous. I mean, Mum says it's because El Giraffa Tremendo is irritating and was making her life very difficult and sad, but she means that it was dangerous. In case you're wondering, I call my uh, guitar El Giraffa Tremendo because El Giraffa Tremendo is her name. You have one new notification, a message about El Giraffa Tremendo. The story of how El Giraffa Tremendo and I met is shrouded in mystery. Some say she was bequeathed to me by a friendly wizard. Some say I pulled her from deep within a rock on an ancient plain. Others say she was a gift from the gods of Olympus or Asgard or Glastonbury. Still others suggest that I won her in a high stakes game of conquers with the devil herself. None of these stories is completely true. However, El Giraffa Tremendo and I truly met, whether it was on the outer rim of a distant groovy galaxy or the budget musical instruments section of a popular retail website, El Giraffa Tremendo is very important to me. If I didn't have a guitar, I would just be a girl that nobody takes any notice of. With El Giraffa Tremendo, I am a girl with a guitar that nobody takes any notice of, but my goodness me, they have to work really hard to ignore me because I am loud. Ouch! George, having sat himself down and arranged his Tupperware boxes around him, had tried to twirl a drumstick between his fingers and poked himself in the eye. He is basically a long series of accidents waiting to happen. If he's lucky, they just happen one at a time, but sometimes they all happen at once. He is a walking lemony snicket. Ah, my eye is watering. Can you see my eye watering? He said. What if my eye is leaking brain fluid? A brain's made of fluid. How much fluid can I afford to lose? George, I'm not a doctor, but I suspect your eye is watering because you just stuck a drumstick in it, I said. Right. Yes, yes, that would make sense. I did do that, said George. I'm fine. Everything's fine. My brains are most likely not leaking out of my eye. I had totally reassured George. Whoa, yeah! Hey, steady on choir of angels. I have to reassure him every half hour or so. It is no big deal. Naomi was standing by her amplifier, her bass guitar hanging at the coolest angle you can imagine. She stared into space. I don't know how she does it, but even just standing doing nothing, she looks like an album cover or a selfie with a million likes. She is so cool. I plugged my amp in. I didn't have a microphone because I couldn't afford one. Mum always says I don't need one anyway because my voice is so amazing. Well, what she actually says is, please lower your voice a bit. There's people on the moon trying to sleep. 
but she means it's amazing. Okay, I said. Shall we do Alpaca Waka Waka? As well as being in charge of naming the band and the chords we play, I am also in charge of naming the songs. I think you can see why. Alpaca Waka Waka was the new song I had written that morning, and the new chord I had invented for it was F minus. Right, George. On four, bang the biscuit tin, and Naomi hit that string right there. I pointed at the string I wanted her to play. These are just the things you have to do when you're the main person in a band. It is hard work, but very rewarding. I arranged my fingers on the guitar's fretboard in the shape of F minus. It felt good. Hmm, it felt right. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. George banged the Tupperware. Naomi twanged the bass, and I hit the strings of my guitar and shouted, Alpaca! Because that's the words of the song. Skadang! What the heck was that? It was awful. It was so bad I almost imagined I saw, I saw a weird floating set. A double doors marked way out appear out of thin air right in front of me. The thing is, though, in Normalton, you sometimes saw weird things appearing and disappearing. And the biscuit factory was very clear that if you saw something like that, then you should A, forget you saw it, and B, forget you forgot you saw it. Which is why I never said anything about those weird floating double doors at the time. They would turn out to be quite important later in the story, though. So don't A, forget I mentioned it, and then B, forget you forgot. What the heck was that? I said, that is not what I said to play. George, why did you hit the Tupperware? I told you to hit the biscuit tin. And Naomi, wrong string, wrong string. Oh, heck, said George. My fur, my fillings are trying to jump out of my mouth. They're the vibrating. Look, can we try that again the way I said to do it? And did, did anybody else see a weird floating set of da 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 said George. But it was time for him to stop speaking and start playing again, and he obviously hadn't realised that, so I helped him out by counting into the song. Ready? A one, a two, a one, two, three, four, skidang, alpaca, whoa! Then some interesting things happened. Firstly, I got vexed, really, truly vexed, because skidang was not the noise I wanted to hear, which meant that either George or Naomi had played it wrong again. Secondly, for a couple of seconds, I definitely, totally saw a weird floating set of double doors marked way out appear out of thin air right in front of me, which then flickered and disappeared. And thirdly, that is not the right noise either, I said. Ahem, said Naomi. I looked over. A large block of plaster had fallen from the ceiling and landed about a metre away from her. Obviously, she hadn't shouted or moved. She was too cool for that. How did that happen? asked George. And did anybody else see a floating dirt? And then crash! Another chunk of ceiling fell, narrowly missing George this time. What the? Something was really clattering the roof of the community centre. I unstrapped my guitar and rushed outside, closely followed by George and Naomi. There was another crack-a-cash. We looked up. Oh, said George. Normalton Community Centre has a lot of really great features that make it perfect for brand pra band practice. It has toilets and plug sockets and Wi-Fi and a vending machine that sells pickled onion flavoured things. But right now, it also had a really, really tall, really, really orange, really, really furry monster flailing at it with really, really long furry orange arms. Really. Mm. 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 How was that for you, Maria? How was that for you? Mm. Mm. It's really good. It was just amazing. Oh, James, it was just amazing. It was just stunning. I hadn't that thought about laughing. the hurt. That was really clever. I know. Laughing and eating a biscuit at the same time. <laughs> uh, folks, there's still plenty of biscuit opportunities uh, to have enjoyed. This is just the most biscuit-tastic radio show ever. You read so beautifully. Thank you so much indeed. Oh, thank you. Uh, folks, we're going to give you a couple of minutes now to continue writing on the Padlet whilst we play some unbelievable Biscuit Factory-inspired music choices. Now, you need to go to the show page. If you're listening on your smart speaker, just head across with a computer to learnradio.net forward slash James Harris. Click on the Padlet, scroll down, find the questions for James uh, window and what you need to do is find that pink button click on that with the circle and the plus key put your first name in the top box underneath that your question and we will be back in just a minute with those questions to the fabulous James Harris what? 
You're listening to LearnRadio.net with Maria Wojciechowska Kanida and Russell Prue. And a very good afternoon to you. James Harris is there. He's on the bottom of the page there looking fantastic. Apparently he decorated around the orange monsters when they moved in. I love that. has got to be one of the funniest things I have heard. Uh, thanks very much indeed for your comments, folks. We love it when you get in contact. Uh, Maria, what do we have on the contact padlet so far? Oh, we've got lots of lovely comments. Thank you so much for tuning in. We have got Lola's Mummy. Lola's Mummy has said, this book looks like a brilliant book. Lola's favourite colour is orange, so we'll probably need to get one. Yes, absolutely. I thoroughly recommend it. Russell, what else do we have? Excellent. Oh, thank you. I've coloured that one orange for you, Lola, as well, because it's one of our <laughs> favourite colours. Uh, Casey, uh, thanks so much indeed. 100% recommend this book, everyone. It'll make you laugh. There's so much fun in one story. We thought so too, Casey. And thanks so much indeed. I've coloured that yellow for you. Maria, what do you have next? Thank you, Russell. So we have a question for James from Andre. And Andre's asking you, did you pick orange because it's your favourite colour? Or is there another reason? Yeah, there must be another reason because orange definitely isn't my favourite colour. I like it. It's one of my seven favourites, um, but it's not my favourite favourite. Uh, I like red a lot and I like green. Orange just seemed like... The, the idea with the monsters is they turn up and uh, everyone ignores them. Uh, so I think I wanted to choose a colour that is very difficult to ignore. So when you see workmen often, they'll be wearing high-vis orange. So I wanted something that was just, it is big, it is vibrant, it is orange, and still people are saying, nah, there's no monsters around here. I can't see a monster. Can you see a monster? <laughs> they are difficult to ignore, aren't they, Russell? They are, and I love that. I just wonder whether there's some tie-in with EasyJet or something like that, or these are easy monsters or something. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Uh, and on that one, Lola's mummies come back and says, are the orange fluffy monsters available to buy? And if not, why not? Not officially uh, from me, but on the other hand, uh, you can find them if you look on the internet. I, I, I don't know why. I just saw it. He's there. He's currently wrestling a dinosaur. Yes. Um, I, I bought him. Don't know what I'm going to do with him, but there he is. Uh, so there are orange monsters available out there. Um, okay. Yep, and then you'll fit, have an orange does that, monster. <laughs> does that fit your view of the orange monster? Does the, does that kind of is, uh, does it kind of represent orange monster world? It's, is that what, kind of... what that represents is something similar? But I mean, if you look at the the sort of the pictures, the way L- Loretta Shower sort of did mm. them on the cover, there's mm. something really distinctive about these ones. So I, then it's not quite as good as if uh, as, no. as if it was done uh, by Loretta's designs there. And and now wow. that I've started sticking googly eyes on the cover of, of various books, I think they should have googly eyes as well. Um, absolutely i've got mine i've got mine absolutely they're stunning and perhaps we something we should talk to loretta about i think there's an opportunity here as well james i think there's some some orange fluffy monster manufacturing i think there's there. some uh, manufacturing yeah. do, uh, possibilities here some do, do get in contact folks if you're an orange fluffy monster manufacturer or you'd like to be do get in contact with us i think we could do some work with you some interesting business maria what do you have next on the padlet there thank you very much so geneve has said um Shops should sell a bag of biscuits called Lucky Dip Bag with a biscuit mixture so that every biscuit is a surprise. Now, that is something I would certainly buy, Russell. That sounds like a, a winner hilarious i'm sure i had a tuck shop at one of those at school and all the purchases were a bit like that really i'm not <laughs> quite sure what you're getting as well uh, i think that's really good thank you so much andre's been in contact as well and thanks so much indeed uh, for that andre says the others in our mini club have been inventing biscuit flavors well we'd love for you to do that on today's show andre as well just get, go to the show page there and whip us some fabulous biscuit flavors share them with everyone we'd love to read those out on the show uh we read this book to each other in our unit. Thank you so much for that. We love the tiny rabbits as a special surprise on the edge of the page. Now, Maria's got a book now, and of course, I read mine on a PDF. So I, this didn't appear to me, but look look at what Maria's doing. If you do that, that's really good. They kind of pop it's, up. They pop, there you are. We can see it. We can see it where your thumb is. That's good. Yeah, and, and then, then they, at the top of the page now. Yeah, just watch that a bit more. Oh, this is... And then disappear. It's awesome. This is bunny tastic stuff at the just as it happens, folks. It's really good. So thank you so much. Thanks for sharing that. And there's plenty more. Uh, uh, Genevieve is coming back with another question. Thank you. Just type away there, and we'll get that in our next section. Absolutely. There's still loads more to come from this. There's still another music track, another break for you uh, to post your questions, and plenty of time. And we'd love your biscuits uh, choices on there as well. You can think some interesting things. I think something with peanut butter. Uh, 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 smoothie would be a great 
what a great idea for the business. And don't forget to your badges as well. These are just, you have to have your badge whilst reading the book. It adds to the whole ensemble, I have to say as well. Now, I have another question here. Hadi is in a band. Have you ever been in one or would you like to be? And if so, James, what instrument or kitchen implement would you be playing? Well, I was in a band and I ah. played bass guitar like Naomi, but I was not as cool as she is. And again, part part of the the thing of of the band is is true to life because George, the drummer, doesn't have any drums, so he uses biscuit tins, Tupperware uh, boxes, whatever he can lay his hands on. And when we started our band, we didn't have a drum kit, so our drummer did the same. Uh, his bass drum was a suitcase. We had sort of cardboard tubes and stuff. I guess the only difference is that we were approaching 20 when we were doing it and, and had in a band <laughs> somewhat younger uh but yes i was in a band it was thoroughly enjoyable uh I, I just loved making music even even when it's terrible which i mean their music in the book is 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 awful uh that's that's part of the charm of them and even, but even when you're playing awful awful music if it's the if it's the sound you want to make they're really there are few feelings like it no, you're right. And they have to make that awful sound again for a very interesting reason as well. Folks, do. this is just a fantastic read. You're going to love it. Now, uh, so what kitchen implement would you play? You talked about a little bit about that mm. and you had a proper guitar. So what would you choose now from your current kitchen to play? Oh, well, I've got, I've just remembered, I've got an egg slicer. Uh, you know, you put a boiled, hard-boiled egg and it's got, and it's perfectly sliced. We can is that the noise? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Oh, oh, I see across the strings there. <gasps> also chopsticks. Uh, I know it's it's not the done thing, but I cannot sit down in a Chinese restaurant without starting to pretend that I'm the drummer in a heavy metal band. I can't do it. I don't know if you can, but I can't. Just start grabbing those chopsticks. A little bit of a soy sauce uh, solo. <laughs> Dining out with James Harris must be such an interesting opportunity. Folks, do avoid Chinese restaurants if you can. Uh, but I think that's a hoot and a half. I love it as well. Marie, you've got another question there. Thank you very much, Russell. Now, James, I'm really interested in the um, the Biscuit Factory employees, your, your Biscuitrons. Yes. And I was thinking about their biscuit-coloured uniforms and was hoping, <laughs> do they have some kind of attachments? Do they have a chocolate bourbon coat or maybe a jammy dodger hat? What do you think? Oh man, I had uh, until this very moment. I was I was this this old uh, when I realised that that is exactly what they should have. They should have like donkey mm. jackets in bourbon colour with with holes down the back, mm -hmm. rows of holes, yeah. and and a, and a jammy dodger hat is exactly what they should have. And they should also have little twirls uh, on their shoes, like on um, oh, what are they ice gems. Oh yes, absolutely. Ice gem. That's it. They're mm. one of my favourite. Party often, biscuits. Often forgotten biscuit, the ice gem, because uh, mm. it's a very small amount of biscuit, quite a lot of icing, but it still counts. Mm. Yes, Absolutely. probably too much icing per biscuit mm. ratio. I can see yes. there being some health issues around that as well, which is very interesting. More biscuit, less icing. Now, I've got a question here. Why is Bicopedia, I love that as well, only available to biscuit factory employees? Because <gasps> it's top secret. Because if people knew that the biscuit factory knew that there was weird monsters and strange creatures being unleashed across, uh, across Normalton, oh, there'd be a, an uproar, a rumpus. A proper kerfuffle. So all that information about what the Biscuit Factory really does is sort of kept secret and is kept on this little uh, internal internet thing. Brilliant. Nice idea. Marie, you've got another question there. Thank you, Russell. Now, each chapter starts with this extract from Wikipedia. Well, most of them, because as you read the book, they kind of disappear for a little bit. But when you read the book, you'll find out why. Now, why did you choose to do this? Oh, choose to put Wikipedia. I think uh, as a kid, uh, particularly, I think around about 11 or 12, my favourite book was The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm. And in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I think it's being re-released this year, particularly aimed at kids, because I've got Chris Riddell uh, illustrating it. But in The Hitch Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, there's the, the Guide to the Galaxy, which is a little handheld device that has all the information about everything in the galaxy yeah. and i think i just wanted a little bit of a little bit of that action i, I like the idea of that authoritative voice mm. saying nonsense stuff so that was certainly one reason why we had the wikipedia in there uh, and also i mean from a, a writing point of view um it's a good place to store information about what is going on at the biscuit factory without mm. without having, having to to find out about it or without having to to break up um the action with too much chat about what's going on 
That's absolutely wow. fabulous. Thank you. And and Russell, you've got a question about the fabulous guitar name, haven't yes, you? Yes, I have. El <laughs> Giraffa Tremendo. I love it. What a fabulous name for a guitar. And we wondered whether you'd had any other ideas before you settled on this one, James. Certainly did. I, uh, in the first draft or two, uh, she was called Susie. And, uh, and that led to an amusing mix up uh, with Man Man, the superhero, thinking they were going to rescue a girl called Susie. But I don't know, there was something a bit not not weird enough, not crazy enough, not bonkers enough about that. Uh, every now and again when I'm writing, I'll pick up um, a Mr. Gum book, uh, the Mr. Gum books by Andy Stanton, just to remind myself of how nutty you can go with language and names and things, uh, and just as a little little primer just to get me it's like uh it's like sunny delight for the brain it just gets you fizzed up and you go ah i can call anything anything uh and so having looked at things like um susie i just thought oh, i can do better than that and so what i did was a grammatically incorrect bit of spanish it turns out I believe uh, yes, it well, be, I um, we do have it. a spanish speaker on the team i have to say and that would be maria so <laughs> maria just talk us through that uh, grammar <laughs> inconsistency there I really enjoyed it. It would be La Girafa. La Girafa because it's feminine at uh, Tremenda. But no, tremenda. I loved it. I thought it was just it was just lovely. I just really enjoyed it. Every time I saw it, I was like, hee hee hee. The guitar is female. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew that as well? Folks, there's still plenty of time to get your questions. Your questions, they're the ones that count. We thoroughly enjoy reading this. This is up. the Reading and Writing Book Club from LearnRadio.net. It certainly is, folks, and we are totally and utterly live across the planet. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to the show. It's eight minutes past four. Thank you so much indeed for joining us and making us your tea time show. We've got James Harris with us, and he's taking your questions. And let's look on the Padlet now. I've got something up here from Sophia. Thank you. She says the uh, uh, the uniform overalls in the factory have secret pockets inside hidden flaps in the drawing. We did in our unit each pocket is the size for one biscuit well Sophia that's a cracking idea what do you think about that James uh, uh, hidden pockets inside coats it's a great idea but as long as you remember you've got those pockets I don't know if you've ever found a biscuit in your pocket but it's rarely there's a delight to finding it and then you eat it and uh, if yes, you've forgotten it, it's I been see. there for a while. Biscuits do not age like wine. There is good news and bad news about that, I have to say. Unless you went for one of those Jaffa Cake biscuits. Mm. In which case, they actually just soften up, don't they, Maria, when they uh, mm. when they go stale as well. Anyway, you've got another question there, Maria. What do we have there? Yes, thank you very much, Russell. So Genevieve says, we are going to make a flip a flip flip book with a fluffy orange monster on the edge of the pages i think it will be hard to make him disappear into a hole like the rabbit well you never know you know it's just wonderful i love that i love that idea That's Russell. Brilliant. It's great. Fabulous. excellent That's excellent. and lola goes on to say do you like james pickled onion flavor oh, i love pickled uh, the own, i mean pickled onion flavor things are better than pickled onions uh, there, I said it. It's controversial, but it's true. <laughs> pickled onion crisps, uh, pickled onion crackers. It's mostly the crisps. I'm, I'm, I'm now currently struggling to think of anything else you would flavour with pickled onion flavouring. Mm. So pickled onion crisps are amongst the best foods ever. Wow. Yeah, I'm floating that. I think that's. I think that's fair to say. I love the vending machine as well. The fact that there's an automated way to access pickled onion flavoured items. It's the dream. It is the dream, Russell. I'm going to buy one if I get my millions. Machine. Just do it. It's going to happen, James. I have to say, you wait till Pixar start phoning. They'll be phoning <laughs> after this show. I tell you, folks, this show has to be a cartoon. I can just see uh, ourselves settling down, enjoying this as well. The fluffy orange uh, merchant wear is just a stunning idea as well. And that is just, I might just try and get one of those orange things. Because, of course, you'll recognize our branding is very orange. Mm -hmm. um, uh, very it's nice. A, it panto, is a good 130. Color. It's a nice orange. It's a good one. And, you know, Stavros chose it for his set of companies for a very good reason reason it's a really nice motivation inspiring kind of uh, color there as well uh, Lola Maria she's been on as well can you read that one for me yes thank you Russell Lola would like to know from you James would you like to work at the biscuit factory oh, I don't know if I would like to work at the biscuit factory it's a bit weird there odd things happen uh, people there's monsters and strangeness uh, and also you have to be quite secret uh, and I'm not sure I would enjoy keeping that sort of secret. So I would say I wouldn't necessarily mind living in a town with a biscuit factory, but I don't think I'd be queuing up to work there on a Saturday. 
Mm, unless you were the receptionist and nobody tells you anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that. Ah, I've, Maureen. I've, I've met Maureen a thousand times over. Normally, but no one told me you were visiting the school today. <laughs> Maureen, I'm so... And, and it's always a Maureen. I love it. It's hilarious. Uh, folks, if you've just joined us, we are chatting live with the incredible James Harris. He is with us on our show page and you can write your questions and ask him absolutely anything. As you can see, if you're already enjoying the show, he's up for absolutely anything. An absolute laugh, James. Thank you so much indeed. I've got another question here as well. Now, in the book, you mention Code 5 and code seven have you got a list of inf incidents that could be codes one to five and what is a code six please james oh no i didn't do any research at all Ooh. i just made them up i just like the idea of some code five wellies i think that was uh, that was why i just like the idea that if you hit a certain crisis point then you're gonna have to crack into the proper wellies um so I, I think I think uh, you'd have to check Wikipedia, which unfortunately, uh, I mean, I managed <laughs> I managed to hack into it briefly and get Only a few little bits of information. But... I love it. I love it. That's hilarious. Somebody, I, I could tell you, but then the biscuitrons would turn up outside. They'd drag me away in a big van marked mm, ingredients. And then <laughs> would you see me again? I just don't know. Probably not, and there's not a lot of that going on in the world at all today, is there? Not, uh, folks. Why don't you? Why don't you uh, uh, help us answer that question as well? So we'll take ideas for codes one to four, please. Uh, obviously, five is a serious Wellington. That's a pr proper outdoor, <laughs> hostile environment Wellington boot. Uh, give us some ideas for your codes one to four. Some great extra activities here. Yeah, it's like, like a, it's um, a ra rising scale of crisis. So I believe code seven is like a cataclysm. So that's quite bad. I don't okay, think what's the new underpants? What's that? There, that so tef need... Teflon underwear? Is that <laughs> yeah. what is yeah. seven? Teflon <laughs> underwear. <laughs> <laughs> just I mean, a what jet is pack, that? an ejector seat, just get out of there. We need uh, that, folks. That, that one to four in terms of crisis. Yeah. Oh, lower down. Okay, so. I would have some what? gloves. Code one gloves. Yeah, for yes. a bit of a kerfuffle. <laughs> orange rubber gloves, yeah. Maria. And, and a code Marigold two, orange. A code two clipboard. I think that's something. I'll leave it with me. I'm going to think about this. Yeah. Yes, we need that. Folks, I... When you run out of biscuits and you've got friends around, or, you know, it's a minor. It's not, you know, don't worry too much. Don't set off the fire alarms. But we don't have any biscuits. So I think that's a code two. Mm. Okay, biscuit mix could be a code three, so a packet of instant to be hydrated, so just add water. Yes. Uh, other Very ingredients cool. are available, would be a nice thing there. Uh, folks, give us your ideas, share them on the Padlet, just go to that show Padlet, Padlet, click on that pink circle and give us some ideas. Codes one to four we'd really, really like, because apparently James didn't do his research. <laughs> didn't do any. <laughs> the book was originally what? called The Believable Biscuit Factory. No, that's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> that's unbelievable i love it i love it uh, folks get involved with us we'd love to see those the padlets are up give us an idea uh, we want so it's an ascending order of urgency so number one would be really kind of low level four a little bit intermediate five and six you already know uh so seven is the cataclysmic kind of event as well six we need a six as well so get in there as well we'd absolutely love that it could be the kind of the guide to the hitchhike um hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy kind of thing so inside there and there are lots of ideas in there as well i can see where why you were so inspired by that maria you've got another question there for us thank you very much russell so james i really like the idea about the mood board um you know it kind of surfs on the wave of emotions and you mentioned the wave of hope and action and for me that was quite profound and we were wondering what hopeful actions would you like to be part of well um there's a lot there's a lot to get involved in uh, mm. at the moment so I, I think part of what the biscuit factory was about was about problems that appear so big that you get to a certain age you just think ah oh, no you can't change that there's no one can do anything about this and then you get truly inspiring uh, uh people like greta thunberg for example talking about mm -hmm. climate change where they just say well you know with that attitude obviously we're not going to change it because no one's going to do anything so mm -hmm. uh, i would get involved in climate strikes climate action things like that um just just tackling the big problems that that people of my age sometimes will have blinkers about and say, well, it, it can't be as bad as all that, or, you know, I'm just going to ignore it. Um, I think that's the kind of thing that I was thinking of actually when I, when I, when I wrote the book, just, just that call to action of like, if no one does anything, then 
it, things will run amok. But if we all work together as a as a team in whatever way we can, whether it by be by making music or raising awareness or actually doing the science, uh, we all have a part to play. I think. Absolutely. And there's no action too small. You know, it can be just turning off the light on the landing or turning off the tap while you're brushing your teeth. All those little things, Russell. I love it. And I love James's run amok. You just don't hear that enough. If only. And I, and I think we've had uh, PMQs, Prime Minister's questions. If only the leader of the opposition had got up today and said, Prime Minister, you've been running amok. That's, <laughs> that's what we want to hear, folks. We want to get back to those old fashioned, those fabulous kind of descriptive language. It was good enough for our ancestors. It's jolly good enough for us. I love it. And there's a lot of that in the book. I loved it. Uh, you, really, it was an amazing book there. Now, there are lots of sound effects, James, in the mm -hmm. book. Lots of sound. And I wonder if you, as an author, Author, do you make sound effects in your daily life? Do I make sound effects? Yes, yes, I do. Like if I go towards, uh, for example, an automatically opening door, I find it very <laughs> difficult to walk up to those without going as if, as if I'm doing magic or using the force. So that would be uh, one thing. I, I just like drum beats and stuff when I'm moving around. Just like... So yeah, I'm a, I'm a constant. I'm a constant sound effect person and also just talking to myself in, in terrible, terrible accents as well. I'm just constantly narrating my own life. Uh, here comes James, he's going to make a sandwich. That's it going to be <laughs> in a sandwich. You're going to need a phone. I'm in fury phone thing with, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> a phone, that's great. I, we like that as well. No. I love the way you could go up I to the doors that. and go, doors, be open. Wow. I do that. I go up and go, Ooh, yeah. and then they open. I go, yes. As if I made that happen. <laughs> using the force. I'm using the force. Uh, yes, I love it. Uh, it's really good. Now, um, can I, now, you talked about the doors as well. And I, I wondered um, if we just stay on that for just a second there. Why do you believe that creativity opens doors? I thought that was quite poignant of you. Talk to me about that. That's a really good question. I, wow. Did I, did I say that? There's a lot in that book that I've probably forgotten about. But I think oh, it's something bless. to do with, well, any act of, of creation, uh, one opens things up in your own mind. It opens things up in other people's emotions, particularly things like music. Music has a very visceral, emotional response for people. And if you get a room full of people all feeling great and amazing and just really enjoying music, then then I just feel that, that in some ways it is transportative. And also just opening a book is opening opening a doorway into another another world, another person's imagination. It's it's a way of of experiencing other people's lives, sort of piggybacking on their emotions and experiences and, and sort of that builds empathy. So I think that's I think that's what I was thinking of, just that idea. And also like in my own life, all the the good things I would say that have happened to me have, have come about because uh, of trying to make things and and do creative stuff with friends. I think I've always I've always enjoyed you know, sitting around and, and having a natter and, and all that is 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 fine. But while we're there, why don't we write a sketch? Why don't we make a film? Why don't we start a band? So I'm a, I'm a little bit restless and creative like that because because doing stuff with this bunch of friends will will create this sort of thing that would not have occurred without these specific people in the room. And same with these people. So the, the idea between George, Naomi, and Hadi, they make a very specific sound that I think I describe as being wrong in exactly the right way. They each play their part in creating the sort of the sound that will save the world. And and that that felt like it meant something. And I couldn't 100% tell you what it means, but oh, can you feel it though? You can feel it definitely. There's something there. I just can't necessarily put it into words, which is a shame because I'm a writer. No, I think, I think you've done very well. I think you have put it into words. It kind of it jumps out of the book. It's it's implicit, really, in a, without being overly explicit, if you kind of understand uh, what I'm saying there. I think that's really important. Now, we've got some great ideas for some further learning. We'll run those past you in just a moment, folks. There are a couple of more remarks on the page there. You're listening to LearnRadio.net with Maria Wojciechowska kanida and Russell Prue. And a very good afternoon to you. It's 24 minutes past four. You are live with Maria Russell and our super guest of the week. It's James yeah. Harris. There he is there in his monster infested studio there. Uh, amazing. Thank you so much indeed. On the Padlet now. Thank you so much. Thierry, who is a medic. This we already know. Thank you so much. Good to hear from you again, sir. Uh, Sophie is in the same chemo unit and in the reading mini club with Andre. So they read chapters to all the children. Uh, 
who are in the unit that day. Splendid. And thank you so much for all your good work you do there at your chemo unit. Uh, we love fun books, as do we, Thierry, I have to say. I'm glad you found uh, this so much fun. That's a lovely, a nice, refreshing uh, comment. Thank you for sharing us, uh, with that as well. It is really good. And James says, hi, that uh, Maria, what do you have next? Thank you very much. So Thierry carries on and says, now they can see your name badges. Do you know, James, sent one to Casey and Rachel. They're both crazy. I am learning run amok. It sounds very funny <laughs> English because he is French. Yes, run amok. I'm going to start using that more often, Russell. It is. Well, uh, you should easily come. There's a lot of that going on uh, in France. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of running amok in, in France as well. So it should come quite naturally to you as well. It's that kind of free thinking, that, that free spirit stuff. And we love that. Absolutely. Uh, Lola's Mummy goes on to say today, uh, James, is there a second book in the offing? What can you tell us? All I can say is I would love to write a second book. I, I keep, I've, I have the first chapter in my head uh, and it, it makes me chuckle. So possibly one day I am, I'm doing, I'm writing a follow up. I'm writing a new book, uh, but it's not Biscuit Factory and it's not Haddie. Uh, a whole different town, different problem. Uh, hopefully uh, plenty of running amok in it and not to give too much away, but I think the main colour on the cover will be green. That's all I can tell you. Um, there's a lot of green monsters in this one rather than orange. Again, green, not not my favourite colour, but it's, it's still up there. No, it chimes nicely with the orange. It's on the other side. Does, yeah, it's opposite, autumnal. Opposite. It's very opposite to uh, the orange on the colour wheel, so I think those yes. complement it. They'll look nicely on the bookcase there, the two colours. I think it's it very, very nice. Uh, publishers, if you uh, want to contact James for a second book there, I think this is there's uh, <laughs> plenty of excitement and opportunity here. You shouldn't have a problem um, selling that at all. Now, uh, with all of our book clubs, uh, listeners, we have a set of extended activities and suggestions from us or idea ets from us about some further learning. Now, if you are into investigating, Maria, what could we offer our learners this week? Well, Russell, if they are investigating, they could find out about the different biscuits that you have around the world. You could even sample them or recreate them with a recipe. Yum, 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 yum. And you could create a fact file to share with them. Oh, I'm starting to salivate already. I have to wipe my chops. <laughs> it's the biscuits. It just does that as well. What a great idea. Fact file. We love that. Now, if you are an inventor, uh, listeners, if you like invent, you could invent your own biscuit. Now, we've done a bit of that fun ways on the show. There's so you could combine two well-known biscuits like a custard dodger. Mm -hmm. mm. There's more dribbling going on now in <laughs> Studio 2. Or a chocolate shortbread. Now, I do like a mm. good chocolate shortbread with a bit of toffee. A millionaire's mm. shortbread, uh, mm. that's called as well. You could create an advert for our radio station, and we'd love to promote it. And you can upload those adverts if you want to on any of our Padlets, and we will play those into our next show. What a great idea that would be. Now, if you're a communicator, Maria, what do we recommend for folks like that? Oh, you could write a newspaper headline for one of the incidents in the book where the ABCs are creating trouble. And James, you can tell us what the ABCs are? Uh, annoying big creatures. Absolutely, yeah. So that would be wonderful. Now, Russell, what if you like working with somebody else and you're a collaborator? Ah, if you're a collaborator, I've got a great idea for you this week as well. You could work with some friends to form a band using everyday items. Tupperwares of drums. You could use rice or pasta in containers or, or maracas. Or you could use a cheese, uh, the cheese slicer. Well, yes, there's a cheese slicer. Or you could use the egg slicer if you wanted and kind of pluck those as well. Or ask, and what else could you create as well? You could record your music in a Zoom call and you could again upload that as a group band production what a great idea for your next there what if you're super creative what could we offer our listeners this week maria oh if you are loving creativity you could design your own fluffy monster but think about what could you make it out of and you could write some instructions on how to make it and give it to a friend and somebody could create a monster i love that idea i love a little monster it makes me think of honey monsters as well i'd make a little honey yellow monster what do you think i look like a bit like a honey I monster love it. today tell tell us about the biscuits mummy i love that as well. you could so easily do now, if you are a thinking philosophy student, you could answer the question, was it right that the secret science lab pretended to be a biscuit factory? Mm. It's a bit like having a nuclear power station on your doorstep without you knowing that the uh, the uh, clothing factory or the uh, furniture factory is in fact a secret nuclear power station. Is that right? Was that fair and right? And you could discuss that in a philosophy class. What a great idea and some great learning and some great opportunities opportunities there as well. 
Well, um, James, we've had an absolute hoot and a half with you. I have to say, I'm just having uh, a look on the uh, the Padlet. There's nothing further from anyone else. Thank you so much indeed for everyone who contacted the show uh, today. Maria, we've had a good time, haven't we? I've just, I know if it's a good show because my cheeks are hurting here. I'm going to have to lie down in a dark room and an orange room, actually. <laughs> dark <laughs> and so orange room. Oh, that's a chocolate orange room, isn't it? Really, oh. Never miss an opportunity to mention a biscuit name. I will never look at biscuits ever the same again, James. And that is intentionally your fault, I have to say. I will... Um, a packet of chocolate hobnobs will never be the same again. You kind of... <laughs> It's just not the same, I have to say. Thank you so much, Eddie. It's a brilliant book. We absolutely loved it. It inspired us. And so many. Well, look at the learning opportunities. They came so easily to us uh, for some extra learning as well. Uh, folks, everything is on the show page. Uh, we will video cast this, wrap this up, and get this up for you to enjoy on YouTube again. And if you want to contact James, all his details are on the show page there. I'm sure he wouldn't mind a booking. He needs to get out more, clearly. Uh, and he'd <laughs> love to come and visit your school as well. Just absolutely amazing there. Uh, the uh, unbelievable biscuit bonanza. We love that as well. And you can also catch one of our biscuit shows, Maria. Talk to us about that. Oh yes, we've got a special Crafty Cafe episode this week where we're talking about the unbelievable biscuit factory and making some unbelievable biscuits, as well as looking at dunkability rating. I think that's very important, Russell. That is very, Absolutely. Very How long will your biscuit survive in a warm beverage? Are we looking at one second, two seconds, three <laughs> seconds, and there's some testing to be done with that? You will need a white science lab coat for that testing, and it's all done in the best possible taste. Uh, and do you see what I did there? Uh, it's absolutely Beautiful. good. Uh, don't forget forget you're very kind um we're here all week strangely enough we so are every week <laughs> uh, folks you can enjoy our, our rss feed all of our podcasts you can subscribe at the bottom of the page if you want to make sure you don't miss any of our shows maria who do we have next week with us well, the guest that we have will be Sophie Kirtley. She's the author of The Wild Way Home, and Sophie read to us on a previous show. Well, she's back, and she will be reading from her new book, The Way to Impossible Island, which is out next Thursday on the 8th of July, so we'll have her the day before. And you can visit the show page right now and secure your signed copy from the book nook. That's learnradio.net forward slash Sophie Kirtley. Okay. So, there you go. Wonderful. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to that. Excellent. Uh, but for this week, folks, if you want to reconnect with us, learnradio.net forward slash James Harris. Everything is there. Links to him as well. Thank you so much. Indeed. If you enjoy the show and you'd like to show your appreciation, there's a GoFundMe donation button at the bottom of the page. Every penny you give us gratefully received and goes towards our running costs. It's very important that this is free at the point of use. Thank you so much indeed for making us your go-to book club today. And thank you again, uh, James. You've been absolutely a hoot and a half. You have really cheered us up immensely i have to say thank you so much indeed uh, folks put your hands together and thank him enormously he was absolutely stunning today thank you thank you really really good thank, thank you. you so much oh thanks bless for you, having sir. me I've you're loved it. very very welcome sir excellent uh, until next time it's goodbye from her and it's goodbye from me <laughs> <laughs>